Yesterday, a gunman in Sutherland Springs, Texas shot and killed 26 people in a church in what is now being called the largest mass shooting in state history, at least as of today. In addition to those 26 people who were tragically killed, approximately 20 others were injured. And then there's some other facts about the victims that is just heart wrenching. The dead victims ages range from 18 months to 77 years old, obviously. Any death is terrible, but I mean, a child, you know, a, a grandmother, which we're gonna get to. Um, in addition, First Baptist Church pastor Frank Pomeroy's 14 year old daughter and all of his family's close friends were killed in the attack. As many people have pointed out, this is a very small community in Texas. And so a measurable percentage of the entire population of that town was killed in this attack. Now, that, that's something that even in our you know, the modern day where we, we experience so many of these shootings on such a regular basis that I, I defy anyone to not be jaded at this point. I mean, that certainly stands out that like the, the community is perhaps irreparably affected by this, this one act of extreme violence. Now, uh, we have a little bit of information about the, the gunman. Uh, he was previously in the Air Force, but he was court martialed and received a bad conduct discharge for allegedly assaulting his spouse uh, and their child. That is an aspect of this story that. Uh, the show will return to in the second hour, uh, hosted by Hannah Cranston. Um, but we do know that the shooting uh, apparently ended. There was some period of time where he was in the church, had free reign range of the church, and then left the church. And uh, a nearby uh, citizen um, named Stephen Williford had uh, apparently heard about the shooting, had gone there, uh, shot the uh, the gunman who dropped his gun, got in a car. They followed him, and he eventually took his own life. Uh, at some point during that drive. Uh, so there's obviously a, a lot to get to in this, but um, I mean, we, we're we're just out of basically the, the time when people are talking about and thinking about Las Vegas. Many people had, had already basically moved on from that. And then you have this, you know, we can't go a month in this country without something cracking the top 10 or top 20. I mean, like Columbine, the big thing when I was growing up, the big shooting, it's not even in the top 10 anymore. Yeah, it, and two of the top ten were in the past month. Yeah, and it's it's a weird it's a weird fact that we you know we stack the bodies to rank these things in the top ten you know, but that these mass shootings have become an epidemic in this country, and it, it it's odd. Also, you'll remember in New York City, it was just last week that there was the that van driver who drove over those pedestrians, and I saw. I think someone may have mentioned it to me, or maybe I saw a tweet saying if he'd had a gun instead of a a, a vehicle, more and people and a fake gun that he had. Like he had a fake gun, gun but, but, but had like he that. had a real AR, you know, which is the yeah. more people would be dead. And at the time, there was blowback. People saying, "Well, that's just a, you know, the anti-gun people are just bringing this up." No, no, but it is a fact that the casualty rate that accompanies these kinds of attack with semi-automatic weapons. Uh, is staggering. And then to your point about the children involved, I mean, you have sort of things that are symbolically uh, reflective of innocence, church, children. And yet, while John says the community will feel these repercussions, it clearly will, uh, it, no, it nothing happens. It doesn't bring on any changes. We saw it at Newtown. If that yeah. didn't bring change, nothing will. And, and I, I really think, and it's Odd also that it happens in Texas, which as you know, has very, very loose gun restrictions, virtually none. Uh, Texas is the place that certainly won't make any kind of changes to legislatively yeah. to this whole, to whole gun problem there. Exactly, and we know that, that certain things, certain actions always come as a result of, uh, of these sorts of attacks. People go out and buy more guns. The NRA benefits, the gun manufacturers benefit every single time there's a mass shooting like this. Their profits will go up 7%, 8% you know, for the next month. They'll make a tidy little sum and then they'll move on. You know, they'll, they'll stop tweeting for two days. Those are the only actions that will come about even from a historic mass shooting in America. And you can feel it even in like the, the, the sorts of people that comment on these things on Twitter. You can feel it in the messaging that there's there's no hope anymore even. There's just, you know, yet again, this is happening. You know, the the place changes, the number of victims might change slightly, but the reaction from politicians, everybody who could actually do something about this will be identical every single time and we know it.
We know how it plays out for each sort. White shooter, you know, you start this script, the country plays it out for 24 hours, then it moves on. You know, Muslim extremist, you play out a slightly different script, maybe you ban a country from coming in. And then you, it's just, it's gotten so depressingly blase in this country. That's why I tweeted yesterday that our apparent official position in this country when it comes to mass shootings is it's frowned upon. We don't like it, but we'll tolerate it and we'll move on as a people. We won't change anything, we won't give up anything for it. We will allow the the craziest gun nuts in the country to continue to dictate what our policy will be in that area. Those people aren't generally gonna have to end up dying in these innocent people, people like 18 month year olds. I don't think they owned a lot of guns. They're the victims in these events, but nothing can come about as a result of it because somebody really likes ARs. Very well put, I mean, there is no change that will, will in fact, it's odd because you'll remember after Vegas, there seemed to be a change in the script. You had the NRA saying, well, we really should maybe examine, that was really like big rhetoric for them, examine those bump stocks and see about them and maybe some changes uh, would make sense, right? The, the, the bump stocks, which none of us had heard of, or most, unless you were a real gun person. I, I mean, had heard of it, but not, oh, it wasn't a common topic or anything yeah, like in that. Any, in any case, I'd never heard of them, but that's the thing that per, that changes a, a weapon to sort of a, be, a, in essence, an automatic weapon. But, and you started to hear legislators say that same thing, like maybe we should look at these bump stocks, we should get them out. And you thought to yourself, wow, it's small, I mean really small, but maybe they really are going to address this now. What happened? Yeah. It, died, it, it, it was orphaned by all of members of Congress and ultimately by the NRA as well. Even the NRA that had initiated that conversation or at least participated in that conversation, they left it alone yeah. as well. So you're right, John, nothing happens. Rhetoric can change modestly as it did, as I just mentioned, but ultimately no changes come about. Yeah, I mean, the, the inability to ban those, how pathetic is our country? Like we're supposed to be, like one of the bad things about America is that we are so scared as a people of so many things and it leads to terrible policies. But you would at least think a side effect of our, our paralyzing fear would be that we'd wanna protect ourselves. But not when it comes to guns, man, we couldn't ban bump stocks, a product whose sole purpose is to effectively break the law. We couldn't ban that. We couldn't ban armor piercing bullets, which are designed to murder cops. If there was a bullet that specifically seek, seek, sought out and only killed those under the age of six, the NRA would be like, eh, let's pump the brakes just a little, we'll talk. What, what could you invent that they would have a problem with? I don't know if there's anything at this point because these people are out of their fucking minds. Well, they view that slippery slope argument as the argument. So yes, they defend every single bit of ammunition, they defend every gun. In, in the strongest way because yeah. they view that that real estate as protected. Yeah. So you're absolutely right, makes no sense. Obviously these semi-automatic we weapons are designed to kill a lot of people at one time. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why they were designed. Yeah, and exactly, and that's why they're chosen for these. I mean, the people who argue that, oh, well, if they didn't have uh, assault rifles, they'd still be able to kill just as many people. Okay, then why do they keep fucking buying the assault rifles? Why don't they just get a pistol? It's way easier, you're less likely to raise the notice of the FBI and things like that. Why don't they just do that? And, and forget, they say you don't, like, well, you wouldn't even need guns, you could just get a knife. Okay, then why the fuck don't they do it with a knife? When was the last time somebody killed 59 people with a goddamn knife? It's never fucking happened, it's so fucking stupid. And the people, like, we, here, 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 why don't we go through the list? All of the bullshit arguments that, that get brought back up every single time that, hey, Chicago's got a lot of gun regulations, but a lot of people die in Chicago. Yes, because the guns come from other areas like Indiana and Illinois that have lax gun laws in general, they're easily brought into Chicago. That's why you need a bigger, more broad ban on this. Fucking obviously, they'll say, you know, oh, church, you're generally a gun free zone. Uh, you know, an elementary school is gun free zone. That's why the killers go there. In every case, they had a particular reason to go to the place that they went. This guy went apparently to murder his grandmother in law who was in the church. School shooters go to their school. But still, the right wingers will say, well, they went there because there's no guns. No, no, people aren't randomly going to schools that have, they have no connection to, to shoot up. They go there because that's where they want to kill people. We have to have these stupid fucking bullshit arguments. We expend that slight bit of energy that we're willing to have as a country. 
and then we're spent and we move on and another shooting happens. And we will be back at this desk, maybe it'll be me and you, maybe Ben Mankiewicz will be here. And we'll break down another fucking shooting. Help us build independent media together, tytnetwork.com slash join.